Well, it's been about six months since I've messed with this old uh, panel truck, and uh, it's got some issues. You can see how the lovely amber color of the fuel is there. Um, got to get that worked out, deal with some points issues. I'm going to check the plugs and uh, see if we can take this thing for a drive and get, get the rest of the bugs sorted out. So welcome back to the channel. This is Lance. This is Speed and Chrome Illustrated. And this is the uh, part three of the panel truck rebuild uh, 1958 Ford F100. So stay tuned. And I do believe that cars have souls. Well, if you've watched part two, you know at the very end I was dealing with some fuel supply issues. And uh, at that point, I just walked away from the panel. I'd been working on it a lot, and the thought of pulling the gas tank back out of it was just uh, too much to deal with, and I was frustrated. So I just walked away from it and let it set for a while. Well, that while ended up being about five months, so... I finally got to the point where I needed to jump back into it and get the stuff sorted out. The fuel that was in it was fresh fuel. The tank had been cleaned out. And during the time it sat, the fuel got darker and darker. And it was obvious that it was still mixing with something in the in the old tank. So, which was new. I mean, when, it, when I parked it and stopped working on it, uh, the fuel hadn't changed colors like you see it here. Having watched a couple of other videos on YouTube with old bad fuel and having it messed up the valves and sticky valves and bent push rods and I was like, oh great, what have I done now? I've, I've went and resurrected this engine, got it running only to mess it up. So that was a big concern of mine. So I needed to get this old fuel out, uh, get the carburetor cleaned out and um, get what fuel was in the line cleaned out. I know there's people that love these little holly one barrels with a glass fuel bowl and people that don't like them. Um, in this case, it was really advantageous to me being able to see the fuel and how it had changed colors um, since it was glass. Same for the glass inline fuel filter. I don't normally run them, the glass ones in line. I usually run the clear plastic ones, but I just had that laying around and so I used it. So um, normally I don't run the them in line like that being glass they're really easy to break i've broken them before um, but in this case it worked to my advantage also while i had my gopro set up i wasn't paying attention and the radio was playing in the background and so that's why you don't hear anything that's going on right now because of the copyrighted songs on the radio and youtube will flag me uh, flag my video and demonetize me for not having the copyright uh, authorization so Sorry for not having any audio of me spraying carb cleaner right here. I really just wanted to run the the carb cleaner through every every port on it, um, just to make sure it was you know clean and there wasn't any garbage in there. I didn't think that anything had been picked up into the line or made it through the line. I should say into the carburetor because I have have been running a, a inline fuel filter the whole time. Um, but it was just mainly the old gas I was trying to get out of there. Just I don't want it coming on anything up and then also getting to the valves and, you know, having causing any issues there either. And there you go. Nice and clean and uh, a functioning float and needle and seat. And uh, even the original, I didn't rebuild this carburetor. Honestly, I can't remember if I said that in the original video number one or not. Um, I just disassembled it and cleaned it very real well put it back together and it worked fine. It didn't leak. The accelerator pumped work. Um, there's really not a whole lot of parts in these. They're almost all metal. You get your, your glass bowl gasket and um, you know, the gasket where it mounts to the intake. There's not a whole lot else going on there. So um, this part here, putting the glass bowl back on uh, I actually stripped one of the screws on the outside and so I ended up having to make another bolt to get one all the way through and had a nut on the backside so it ended up not being too bad it was easy to access the backside 
And so I was able to get that resolved. As you know, if, if any of you guys spend any time working on these old cars, uh, there you go. See, it's spinning and spinning and spinning. <laughs> yeah, that's stripped. Um, if you've spent any time working on old cars, uh, you're going to run across things like this. This is common, very, very common stuff. So you just got to deal with it and keep going. And that's the new bolt there. Uh, I put the nut on the back of it and uh, was able to tighten it down from the front and uh, get it all pulled in. And once it had new fuel in the bowl, didn't leak at all. It was totally fine. The other three screws tightened down real nice and didn't have any issues there at all. I had pumped the remaining fuel that was in the line and in the filter and everything into this uh, gas tank here. So all the old fuel just was just pumped through. And here I'm just retightening the line on the, uh, the hard line that goes to the carburetor. This fuel line, the original fuel line that come off, the hard line that comes off the carburetor is a tiny bit smaller than the inside diameter of this, uh, the new rubber fuel line that I'm installing. So I'm just installing a couple of a clamps on it. So just so I don't have any leaking issues. And this is my workaround for the fuel, new fuel supply. So this is a boat gas tank that I picked up and um, I just ran a whole brand new line from this. This has a, a built-in fuel gauge on it, holds 10 gallons of fuel. I'm just running the gas line up through this factory hole in the floor, put a rubber grommet on it. This is all just temporary um, until I can get the fuel tank pulled back out. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure I had a brand new clean fuel supply and I wasn't fooling with the other gas tank anymore. So what, I, what we did off, off camera that I didn't show is I went through and I checked every single wire for continuity, made sure all my plug wires were working well. Um, they were. So I went through and also pulled the plugs and uh, cleaned each one, put it back in. Uh, when it would run, it would, wouldn't run well. It would run and it sounds like it was running on two cylinders instead of six or maybe sometimes three, but it would never run on all six. So I'm just trying to go through and just check everything again from when I originally put it together to make sure that everything was functioning properly. I didn't have a, a, a bad plug or, um, you know, a wet plug or, you know, whatever's going on. All, all six plugs looked exactly the same. So they were all burning the same. So, you know, just doing due diligence here. <music> Here I'm just using some carb cleaner uh, in place of starting fluid just to help it light off so that there's no fuel in the fuel bowl. And now the fuel bowl is starting to fill up, so that's good. So at least the fuel pump's working. It's pulling fresh fuel from the new gas tank and it's running, sort of. So this goes on for a few more minutes, three or four more minutes trying to start it. So what's going on is it starts, it wants to run, but it's not firing every cylinder. It's got some, some issues. So it's basically at this point, I've pulled all the plugs and cleaned them, cleaned out the carburetor, and it's made no change to 
how it's running. It's still running the exact same way it did before I cleaned all those things. So obviously something else is going on here. So right after this, I decided to check the points. Um, I had taken a look at them earlier. They looked okay, but I hadn't cleaned them or anything. So I went ahead and pulled the cap and rotor back off, filed the points uh, really well, cleaned them up. They didn't, they didn't look very good. So there was a texture on them and those were brand new points. They hadn't been in the truck for, you know, it had been about 18 months at this point. No, not 18 months. A little longer than 18 months, but they were brand new points. So for them to fry that quickly with me having not drive, driven this thing around um, is not good. So I went ahead and filed them and uh, then it wouldn't run at all. So that at least gave me my answer. The, the, uh, the problem was more than likely the points. So um, I ran ahead and ran to the auto parts store picked up a new set of points and at that point it was too late to work on it so so I go to my lo local auto parts store quite often they know me really well they know all my projects you know I'm always working on old junk and they're they usually have to order whatever I need um, they looked up the points I had ordered previously and then proceeded to give me a bad time for buying the five dollar points and not the nine dollar points but to be fair, at the time, I didn't even know if this engine was going to run at all. So why spend, spend the extra five bucks, you know, if you don't need to, you know, I'm just trying to be prudent here, you know. And also, speaking of being prudent, the rotor and the cap are actually the ones that came with the truck. And they looked perfect, like literally brand new. So, you know, and they have worked fine. So I just went ahead and left those. I did replace the wires and the coil and then, you know, rewired everything, as you can see. Here I'm just trying to reconnect the original wiring. Um, the original wiring comes up from the bottom and the distributors has been taped. It's really old tape and I just wanted to try to be really careful with it and not break it and you know make sure it connected okay and then it also because it came up from the bottom, I needed to make sure that the that the plate would rotate to advance the ignition without getting hung up on the um, on the wire that runs down next to it. So, these little small sets of wrenches. Um, this one came with my Craftsman set. Uh, work fantastic for this little detail work like this, you know, working on points and just real small things. Um, they're really, really nice to have. When I bought the points, the new points, you know, the $9 points, I also got a new uh, condenser to go with those at the same time. So they, they were matched. They're like Blue Point or something, I think, is the brand. Um, it was the best they had for sale. I believe they're made in Mexico. The original set of points that I had, I don't remember where those are made, but um, points are interesting. They're kind of hit and miss, and... Uh, even when I was working on my F-250 and I put points in it, um, within a few weeks, they fried. I had to replace those as well. So here I am I'm setting the point gap. And as you can see, I am using a blade from a box cutter. And that box cutter blade is exactly 25 thousandths, which is what the points need to be. And I couldn't find my uh, feeler gauges, but... I had a micrometer, so I mic that, and it was what I needed it to be. So that's what I'm using to set the points with. I'm playing this at regular speed too. A lot of the other videos I have on here, I speed up just because it's just, you don't need to see it at real time. But this I'm playing at actual speed just to show, you know, 
how you can go in and make a fine adjustment, check it, make another fine adjustment, check it. So it's exactly where it needs to be. This one, every time you went to tighten the points so they wouldn't move, it actually kept readjusting the gap. So it took a little bit of time to get it, get it just right. <laughs> Now I'm just checking to make sure that there's power to it um, with the key turned on um, like there should be. Make sure I didn't break any of the wires leading up to it. Like I said, they're they're pretty delicate, they're the original wires in the distributor, so. But everything seemed to be fine, so good to go. That's the original rotor I was talking about earlier that came with the truck and it was like brand new, so why not use it? The funny thing about a lot of these older parts is the original old parts are were made better at the time than the new stuff is. I mean, that rotor is at least 40 years old, that cap's over 40 years old, so. But they were made well back then, you know, usually made in the USA. <laughs> All right, with the cap and rotor in place, uh, let's see if this thing will run. That's the choke there that I'm adjusting. And just like that, it's running on every single cylinder. Um, the idle's a little rough still. Uh, I think I still need to work some of that old fuel out of the system, but that's what the shakedown runs for. Since I've only wired this up to run and I don't have any uh, brake lights, my wife's going to follow me around too. Just to keep it a little safer, I don't need anybody running into me. Let me apologize here for the uh, really, really dirty windshield. In my excitement to go for the shakedown run, I neglected to clean the front windshield. So that's about six months worth of dirt and dust and junk. So um, sorry about that. Still not idling very well. Uh, of course, this is just the beginning of the shakedown run, so dies at the first stop sign. And then uh, this is me trying to take off in third gear, which doesn't work very well because it's uh, got a pretty tall gear in the rear. So getting in the first gear allows it to actually take off like it's supposed to. That clicking sound that you hear you might think is the GoPro but it's actually the speedometer that's making that weird sound it's just the grease that should keep it lube is it's all dried up my wife
wife was able to capture some video from behind me as she was following me around, so that was pretty cool of her. second time I've ever driven this truck since I've owned it so I'm still getting a feel for it uh, the brakes work really really well um, the disc brake upgrade that I did the Speedway kit um, I've been very very happy with it uh, stops really really well in fact I wish my f-250 stopped as well as this does but it's got the original four-wheel drum brakes on it and because it's an f-250 it's not a couple hundred bucks to upgrade the disc brake kit, so unfortunately it's way more money. Thankfully, the truck's making all the right noises. Um, clutch works, seems to function just fine. Shifts through all the gears very, very smoothly. Rear end's making the right noises. You know, you can hear the gear whine for sure. first leak check and uh, I've been driving it for maybe 10 10 15 minutes at this point uh, idle still a little high uh, but it seems to be smoothing out a little bit but I just want to double check everything there's no fuel leaks there's no leak no coolant leaks uh, you know no oil leaks and everything checked out real well so I was real happy all right just to make this uh, shakedown run a little more fun uh, and increase the speed because after driving around for quite a while on this it gets a little monotonous so uh, if you want to skip ahead a few more minutes I'll go back to regular speed but if not enjoy this F1 style cruise had about five gallons in the 10 gallon tank um, the new boat tank that I put in so I wanted to stop and top it off with uh, some premium fuel to try to get you know any junk that's remaining in the carburetor worked out uh, as well as you know clean up the valves and stuff too 
I also added a half a can of sea foam to the fuel tank. Uh, that really helps clean out the carb, also helps clean up the valves, uh, carbon, all that junk that's in there helps clean all that stuff up. Similar to Berryman's, if you've heard of Berryman's, sea foam's the same. Works great. At this point, it's already starting to idle better. It's smoothing out. The little flutter that it had is starting to go away, and it's just the whole thing is just getting smoother and smoother. The more I drive it, the better it's running. I headed up to about 50 miles an hour cruising around town and uh, yeah it's running well.
at this point I'm a good half an hour into the drive and the truck's doing well it's smoothed out tremendously um, and idles I can push the choke all the way in and it idles at the slowest level um, really smoothly every stop light stop sign does just fine doesn't die anymore and uh, the little flutter that it had is, is at this point it's completely gone so it's driving riding and driving very nicely uh, except for the fact that there's no there's the shocks on it are the original shock so it bounces around a little bit but it's not too bad driving the truck around for about an hour. My wife was really tired of following me at this point. Uh, the truck did fantastic. I was very, very happy with the way it performed. It got better and better the more I drove it. The idle smoothed out, no more flutter, no leaks, uh, which is really nice. Brakes work really well. Uh, like I said, it could use some shocks and uh, the exhaust definitely needs to be ran all the way out the back right now and exits right under the truck. And so the cab fills up with exhaust which is not the best to be breathing in but hey you know you got to start somewhere if you're still here and you're still watching thank you very much for sticking around for this 30 minute update on this uh part three panel truck rebuild revival rescue whatever you want to call it uh, it's been a lot of fun fooling with this thing for the last couple of years but uh, hopefully it goes to a new home soon and uh, they continue on where I left off thank you very much for supporting the channel we appreciate you take care drive fast <laughs>